Hello silver friends, this is Jolie from Quicksilver Hair where we normally talk all things silver hair, but today we're gonna to get into another video in my Embracing Slow Fashion series. In this video, we're gonna talk about some of the things I learned about shopping for slow fashion, shopping for sustainable fashion, and some of the tips that I applied to my own life that helped me to slow down my shopping experiences and buy more consciously. If that sounds good to you, let's get started. Because embracing slow fashion is a slow process, I made a mistake right out of the gate. I decided that I was no longer going to shop for fast fashion, so therefore I would shop for slow fashion, and I dove headfirst into buying sustainable clothing. The mistake there was that not all sustainable companies are sustainable. Not all of their practices are up to par. And unfortunately, I learned that the hard way. So we're gonna get into that a little bit later in this video. Slow fashion has become a whole new way of life for me. And with new ways of life, you have to learn new ways of coping, dealing, and have strategies in place to make sure that you succeed. So learning to shop for new things for me became a little bit more about being mindful about what I actually needed over what I just wanted to do to fill a void. And for me, shopping was filling a void, whether that was boredom or just being exhausted and really didn't know what else to do with my time except for mindlessly scroll websites and companies for new clothing. One of the things that I realized was I needed to go back to the shopping list mindset um, I mean, it wasn't that long ago that our grandmothers and great grandmothers had a list for all the things that they needed and the only thing they bought when they went shopping were the things on that list. They were very mindful about what they needed and what they were going to incorporate into their world because financially they needed to be in most cases. And many times, most of what they purchased, they used it up to its fullest capacity, including you know clothes being turned into rags or being sewn into quilts or being made into baby clothes. It was always used to its fullest potential and it started with a good list. I'm not opposed to good lists. So that was something that was easy for me to do was to start making lists of things that I actually needed versus what I just wanted or thought was cute and had to have. So let's start off by talking about the concept of fast versus slow fashion. When I plotted this out and realized, okay, you, you can't go from one extreme to the other. You have to kind of gradually maneuver between these two worlds. Fashion happens on a spectrum, right? We know this from a financial standpoint. We know that there is the ultra cheap to the ultra elite. And we also know that there is the ultra not so well made to the ultra well made. And those are the two extremes that we often think about in fashion. But there's another extreme. There is this extreme between what is slow fashion and what is fast fashion. So slow fashion, if you think about it, ultimately is hand sewn, hand knit, hand crocheted, some sustainable brands, maybe consignment, thrifting, or finding crafters or shopping on places like Etsy where the items are handmade, and clothing rental. That is probably the slowest fashion you can get. On the other extreme is fast fashion which the goal with fast fashion is to make as many garments as possible, as fast as possible. So many of these stores like Shein, Timu, Zara, Gap and Old Navy, Walmart, H&M, Forever 21, Free People and Urban Outfitters, Kohl's, Marshalls, TJ Maxx, Ross, these are all companies that rely on selling the most garments they can in a day. They are not concerned with the quality and they're not concerned with what happens to that garment once it leaves the store. They're only concerned with their bottom line and making sure they make as much money as possible. So in the middle are brands that are not necessarily slow, they're not necessarily fast, but they're not contributing to the fast fashion world and they are contributing to making finer garments that live a little bit longer. So some examples here would be Target, surprisingly enough, J. Jill, Levi's, L.L. Bean, Garnet Hill, you get the idea. When you wanna to go to the slow side of this fashion spectrum, 
Um, you want to look at and focus on quality, forever pieces, alterable, resellable, sustainable fabrics, ethical, giving back, and circulatory programs like consignment shops or where you are giving the garment back for it to be recycled. In this spectrum, we have to figure out where we want to land. For me, I figured out there was a happy medium in this space called moderate fashion that I have on the fashion spectrum. Now, while I have put a hard pass on all fast fashion, it does mean though that when I go into moderate fashion, I have to be careful where I'm shopping and why I'm shopping there and make sure that whatever I am shopping for and whatever I receive meets some quality, you know? It meets some of these ideals that I've put a focus on. So now that you know the fashion spectrum, one of the things that falls on this spectrum is cookie cutter greenwashing. And unfortunately, when we put the word sustainable in front of these brands, sometimes they aren't as sustainable as they seem. And sadly, I started to figure this out when I started to investigate companies. When I would land on their website, I would scroll down to the footer and look for their sustainability page or their ethics page to see what they were offering in that regard. And I quickly noticed that there was this cookie cutter kind of copy and paste statement on some of these pages and they looked very similar. The language was very similar. The statements were very similar and it was really just giving lip service to our sustainability practices and there was no proof of that practice nor was there any accountability for it. So these pages to me stood out very rapidly as being lip service and that they were not meaningful in any way whatsoever. And I noticed it on some major brands that I shop for regularly. You can look on the Lucky Brand website to see what I'm talking about and you can, you know, check that out and see what you think. But I quickly saw not as sustainable as they would like to say they are. And that's just one example. Um, but start looking, start looking at these pages, open 10 different stores that you like, scroll down to their footer and see what you see on their sustainability page. Does it look the same on every page or very similar? That's where I started to question what is going on here. I started looking further into this and I found a company called Good On You. It's a website where you can go and you can type in the name of the company and it will give you a rating for whether they are a sustainable company or not, or whether they're meeting some level of good ethical sustainable practices. Now, of course, this company is biased towards sustainable companies and it's not perfect yet. They don't have all companies listed, but I wanna go over a couple of companies that I was duped by. So here's the first instance of a sustainability dupe. There's a company called Quince out there. I'm sure you've probably seen it. I've seen it advertised everywhere. And of course, once I clicked on one of their ads, they were popping up left and right all over the place. One of the first things that caught my attention when I purchased from them was all of the items were shipped direct from China. I'm sorry, but this bothered me. And they are claiming that this is more sustainable because they're shipping direct without using distributors. But if I order one thing or five things and it comes in one or two packages and it's been shipped all the way from China, tell me how that is more sustainable than sending a cargo ship over to a distribution center stateside and having it shipped from the distribution center. I just don't see how that's more sustainable from an environmental standpoint. That's a plane with five garments basically <laughs> coming over. I mean, obviously they're shipping over more at one time on a plane and maybe I don't really fully get the logistics of that, but it seems pretty extreme to be shipping direct from China to the US and calling it sustainable. Just my take on it. One of the things that Quince sells is cashmere and they sell it very, very cheap for cashmere. And that doesn't mean that the garments are cheap, so don't take that the wrong way. You may appreciate this and, don't, and not care, but I work with someone who works with the cashmere industry directly. And because of this, I know 
that there is a lot of scamming in the cashmere industry. Often the fibers are not 100% cashmere and they are mixed with other fibers, or it's not even cashmere at all, they just call it cashmere and it's some other fiber altogether. Another issue with cashmere is that it is not a sustainable farming practice in most cases. This is getting better. Some of the farmers are understanding that they cannot continue to um, grow massive herds of goats and not decimate the land. Because if you know anything about a goat, they will eat everything in their path. And one of the things about cashmere goats is that when you have a large herd of them, they will clean up an acre of land in a heartbeat. And then their hooves will also damage the land so that nothing can grow there. So one of the things that's happening in these regions where cashmere farming is a big industry is the land is being destroyed. So when you're looking at cashmere and it's extremely cheap, you have to question where did it come from? For me, it really did make me question. Another thing I noticed is once I had purchased the items that I wanted and they had arrived, I shipped everything back except for two items. I had ordered one top in two different colors. They actually arrived separately and I did decide to keep them because I loved the fit and I loved the quality of the fabric. What I didn't realize is that I didn't actually get what I had thought I was purchasing. Two items that I did keep from Quince were two sweaters labeled organic cotton and cashmere. I should have known by the price, just by what I've said about cashmere, that they couldn't have possibly contained too much cashmere. I didn't realize how much cashmere they contained until I went to launder them. And shockingly, I was under the impression that they were at least somewhat close to a 50-50 blend of cotton and cashmere because they were sold as organic cotton and cashmere sweaters. Instead, what I found when I pulled the tag out was that they were 65% organic cotton, 32% viscose, and 3% cashmere. I kept the garments because I really liked them and I decided I will just let them live their best life with me, but that was my last time for shopping at Quince. I will never shop with them again because I feel like I got duped and I feel like they really aren't a sustainable brand. Next up on my list is Everlane. Everlane is rated on Good On You as it's a start. So they do have some sustainable practices. They are using some sustainable fabrics and so forth. There is one major issue with them that I'll get to in just a second, but I basically decided I'm just gonna order a few t-shirts. I ordered a few of their V-neck cotton t-shirts and I noticed right away that they were rather thin. I had to buy them in a pretty large size. I had to go up a size. I think I had to go up two sizes for them to fit. So they run very small. They're very expensive and it wasn't but about two washings that I noticed that the neckline on all the t-shirts was starting to get loose and you know kind of wrinkly around the V and they were shrinking and I was hang drying them <laughs> so I was like how is this shrinking and I'm hang drying it so I was a little annoyed by that by the cost of the shirts I found fair indigo I really, in comparison, you know, with the garments side by side, Fair Indigo wins hands down for a quality, well-made cotton t-shirt. So they are now my favorite brand. But another thing that's going on with Everlane is they are under a great deal of scrutiny for some of their labor practices. You can check out more of that on the Imperfect Idealist. Um, if you want to, you can follow her on YouTube. She's great but I'll link her article below in the description box below if you wanna learn more about what's going on with Everlane. But basically, I turned pretty sour over Everlane after watching her content on it and decided I would no longer shop at Everlane either. So that's two examples of being duped by sustainable fashion. And while they weren't seriously expensive because I was able to send back the items to Quince that I didn't want, and the Everlane items, I just kept them until I couldn't use them anymore. But it really showed me that you can't just believe everything you see when it says sustainable. So let's unpack sustainable. There really is no 100% sustainable fabric. I dare you to Google any fabric, cotton, polyester, silk, nylon, any fabric you can think of. You can Google it with a query of sustainability and you will find out very quickly that there's always some issue 
with the fabric and an environmental factor. It's no surprise to me because I live um, pretty close to the cotton industry of America and it, you know, cotton is pretty hard on the land. It's really not the most environmentally friendly fabric. However, for me, for my skin, it's one of the friendliest fabrics I can use. So I choose to buy organically grown fair trade cotton. But the interesting thing is, is when you really look at what is 100% sustainable, honestly, by the time I went through all this research, what I came to conclude was that 100% sustainable would mean we stop producing all fabric right now and only use what we've produced from here on out. That would basically be the only way to make it 100% sustainable. That's not feasible. We're not going to do that. So it comes down to your choice in what fabrics work best for you. And then I would say, you know, kind of stick to those fabrics. For me, I'm a cotton person. I love cotton. It's breathable. It's cool. I live in a hot climate. Cotton's very nice for that. So I'm not giving up my cotton, but I will try to do my best to find, you know, more sustainable made cotton garments. So again, it's up to you. You'll have to figure that out and navigate that. And maybe in another video, I'll get into more about fabrics and how sustainable they are or not. So what do you do? Where do you go from here? I found a happy medium. Like I said, I started shopping in kind of some mid range areas that weren't necessarily hundred percent slow, slow fashion or sustainable fashion, but definitely were not fast fashion. And I've explored several brands and you know, it's just comes down to what fits me well, what I feel is the best quality. And that will be what you'll have to do too. But I started honing in on the brands that I love that carried fabrics that I love and that were trying to become more sustainable. J. Jill is a good example. You can look at their sustainability page on their website, which to me does not read like the cookie cutter greenwashing page. <laughs> so I really <clears throat> have always loved J. Jill. Um, they don't always have pieces that I can wear or want to wear. But I always, you know, go through if I'm looking for something, I will go to J. Jill and see if they have something that fits the bill. And then, of course, when their sales come up and stuff, I will go through their sales and see if there's anything that can fill any gaps in my wardrobe. But I also started learning to, as far as slow fashion goes, I started to slow down and buy less and buy more um, consciously, like I said, about buying things that I actually needed rather than just filling that void of shopping just to shop. So I also follow some basic rules for my own wardrobe, my own shopping, and my own needs. Like I said, I'm shopping with intention rather than impulse. You don't have to be a minimalist or anything like that. It doesn't require that, especially if you're shopping consignment, you can buy as much as you want. But for me, I, you know, one of my goals was to downsize my closet because I did not need as many clothes as I had. Um, but you do find that you are rather purposeful about what you're buying rather than being impulsive. For instance, this fall when I was putting out all my sweaters for winter, I realized I didn't have a red sweater that I loved. So I went on the hunt and I specifically wanted a cardigan. So I went to a couple of places that I trust and I found something I loved. I actually ended up buying it from Loft, which isn't my number one source, but the color of red that they had in the cardigan was a color I could actually wear. And turns out I really loved the cardigan. I really like it. So I have decided that I will keep it and enjoy it. So going back to our grandmother's lists idea, I made a list of things that I wanted as I was putting out my clothes for winter. One of those items was a red sweater and I went and found it and I found something that I actually loved. And it meant that I was shopping with intention rather than impulse. So here are some tips that may seem kind of random, but they are some of the things that I implemented into my own life and my own closet to help me navigate being a more mindful shopper and to slow down my consumption of clothing. Number one is shop on delay. This means that basically you're window shopping. You can fill your cart with as much stuff as you want. Um, take a screenshot of the cart and go back and look at those items a day later, a week later, a month later, or when the items go on sale and see if you actually still want them. This gives you time to slow down and think it out. And often 24 hours is all you need to forget about that item. But 
it also gives you time to come back and you can review, like I made the mistake of not reviewing what the garment was made out of, but you can go back and you can review what it's made out of, look at the reviews and see what people are talking about instead of just throwing it in the cart and hitting buy. So next up is investment pieces or forever pieces. These are pieces like probably coats or boots or jeans even that are items that you're going to try to keep forever. One of the things that you want to look at is the construction of the garment. Is it going to fluctuate with you? Can you wear it at different weights? Or if you, you know, if you gain weight or lose weight, can you alter the item so that it fits you in whatever state you're in? Um, for me, I'm kind of careful with forever pieces um, because I like things large and loose that's okay because I can buy it in the size that I'm in now and not worry about if I do lose weight it being overly large. Of course, that's gonna happen if you lose a lot of weight or you gain a lot of weight, you're gonna come in and out of sizes. But it is something to think about. Think about buying pieces that you're gonna have forever. So for me, like this year, I bought a wool coat that I absolutely love and it has been absolutely perfect for house training the dogs and being out in the cold wind because it's a very long wool coat and it's easy to grab and easy to put on. Next is shopping consignment or secondhand. I don't particularly care for thrift stores. That's For me, it's just an overwhelming space. They're just a lot of stuff and it's not something I like to do. But I do like consignment shops and I did find when I was younger that consignment was my jam. You know, I really liked being able to shop basically for free. I took clothes in and I took clothes out and it was all on credit. And it was a great way for me to make it through a time in my life when I didn't have a lot of money. So consignment is one way that you can participate in the slowest version of slow fashion by not buying any new garments whatsoever. I think if you can find a great consignment shop around you and you love shopping there, setting up a relationship with that consignment shop or secondhand store is an amazing idea. Another thing is maybe you're not fully finished cleaning out your closet, so start shopping your own closet. If you find items in your closet that you haven't really worn, pull them out, put them in view so that you can see them. Maybe put a tag on them, put the date on it, and if you have not picked up that garment in a year, it's probably time to let it go. But if you look at the garment and say you think of yourself as if you were in a consignment shop and you're looking at the garment and you're like, wow, I really love this, I really want this, keep it, wear it, put it to good use. So the next thing I practice is no buy time frames. And usually this is a week or a month. So sometimes I will just you know, do this little reset and won't buy any clothing in that time frame at all. Even if something goes, you know, if I tear something or I need to replace something, I will write it down and I will wait until the no buy time frame is over or I'll stick it in my cart or whatever and wait until that time frame is over. I do this a couple of times a year and it helps me one budget wise, I just spend some time not buying anything, but it also gives me kind of a reset. Remember that 80% of the time, you're only wearing 20% of your clothing. So if a no buy time frame feels off to you or it doesn't feel right to you, this might be a time to practice shopping your own closet. Next up would be to play some numbers games. So there's some ways as you begin to start shopping again to play these little numbers games so that you're not overfilling your closet and so that you are more mindful about what you're putting in your closet. <clears throat> so here are some of them that I play and maybe they'll help you. The one in, one out rule. So this means if you buy one garment, you have to take one garment out of your closet. When you're getting rid of fast fashion, this might look more like one in, 10 out. But as you start to eliminate fast fashion, it will get harder to put one in and take one out. So it makes you kind of slow down and think about, well, if I buy this, what am I going to take out? The side of this too is that when you are done with fast fashion and you have replaced most of your closet with higher quality items, you'll be a little less uh, likely to want to get rid of things because you'll want to hang on to especially like your forever pieces and so forth. So one in one out is kind of fun in the beginning and as you build this slower fashion closet, it might not work as well. The next one is 30 out in 30 days. So you can play this game in any room in your house and I have played it in every room in my house and that is collecting 30 items, one item a day for 30 days and getting rid of them. So this is just a way to kind of keep calling. It's that continued edit process. 
and it's kind of fun. It was a real challenge for me. I did it over a year and <laughs> I found some really interesting things out about myself and I was able to let go of a lot. Uh, 90 items per season. So each season, there's roughly 90 days in a season. And if you start each season with 90 items of clothing, um, it might be interesting to see if you can survive a season with 90 or less even items. And if you have more than 90 items, can you cull it down to 90 items? The final numbers game is quarantine per season. This is where four times a year, you take 10 to 20 items and you quarantine them in your closet. And for that season, if you never grab them, if you never wear them, or you have never even think about them, it's time to let them go. This is a mindset shift. It takes a lot to grasp. And you know, for me, anytime I'm making major changes in my life, it helps to have some things to keep me moving forward. So here are 10 concepts to move forward with. Number one, ethical garments can be more expensive, but remember fast fashion isn't always cheap. Slower fashion garments are usually much higher quality. Slower fashion garments will likely last longer and you must think of it as an investment. Be very careful of greenwashing. Make thoughtful compromises as needed. Support small businesses and crafting entrepreneurs. Use secondhand and consignment to your advantage. Remember, the more you have, the less you wear. And embracing favorite items of clothing and wearing them more often is actually much easier than you would ever imagine because there is less in the way so that you can get to that favorite item. I have created a links page that I'm going to put in the description box below, and it is going to be something that I can edit on the regular. You might want to bookmark the page, but it's just going to be a set of links to all of the brands that I love and know um, create good quality products. Some are sustainable, some are in that moderate range. In the comments, tell me some of your favorite brands that are more sustainable and some of the ways you shop for sustainable clothing. I would love to know what you're up to. I am still working on the ebook and I will get that linked in the description box of all of the slower fashion videos as soon as it's ready for you guys. Remember to sign up for my emails because that will be the way you will be notified of when that ebook is ready. And while you're down there, hit the like button if you found this video helpful. And if you haven't subscribed already to my channel, please do so now because I would love to see you next time. Until then, shine on.